repente no hago más que dibujar este símbolo y no sé qué es. Ajá. Creo que me estoy volviendo loca, Simon. Mira. Ufológicamente razonable. Dios, esto me está pasando. ¿El qué? No es real. Ahora me estás acojonando. Clarique, estás... Um, I don't want to say specifically if there is anything because I don't want it to taint your um, expectation of the film. Um, but I think uh, for me what was so great is that it truly mirrored what I imagined in my head. The sets were as epic as it felt in the books. I think uh, one of the main things they did with the film was they aged up the characters. They went from being, you know, a, a, an age of like 15 to 17 to being more like early 20s so that I think they could explore the love, the romance of the thing a little bit more between this character, that character and this character. Also, I think the, the film is a very, very dark and somewhat macabre uh, adaptation of the books. You know, I think um, the Shadow Hunters are this quite dark, quite gothic, uh, race, whereas in the books, you know, I think Jace is more kind of footloose and fancy free. Um, River Phoenix was a, um, a huge inspiration for the character of Jace. So uh, for me, I, 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 it's, I'm honored that you can hear that and that you can see that. Um, and uh, that's great. I made a mood board. I had uh, River Phoenix, James Hetfield, uh, you know, Kurt Cobain, Johnny Depp, uh, Heath Ledger. Um, so I'd go into my trailer every day and look at those people. Yeah, that's what I like so much about the movie, is that it's not one particular genre. It's funny, dramatic, there's romance, there's action. Um, it's kind of everything combined. And it deals very much in a fantasy and a reality world where this young girl is finding her voice as a young teenager, but also as a shadow hunter. And I think many, many people can relate to it. Los demonios existen en todo el mundo, adoptando diferentes formas. Los cazadores de sombras no se adhieren a ninguna religión, y a cambio todas las religiones nos ayudan en la batalla. Podríamos haber ido a una sinagoga judía o a un templo sintoísta. I think, you know, I always have been aware of the fact that with any adaptation there's going to be a preconceived idea of who the characters are. They're loved characters. 22 million copies of this book have been sold. I'm aware of that. I have to, as an actor, embody what it is that I believe the character to be and also try and please those people as well. But until they see the movie, their judgment or their sort of opinions don't really have any weight, let's say. There was one thing that uh, Harald Zwart, our Capitan, our director, wanted, was that he did not want Clary to be a damsel in distress. He didn't want her to be constantly upset and, you know, unable to deal with the world. So I think she, what was important was to definitely have those moments where she's strong and she's, she's able to digest the world with some comedy. And, uh, and you know, I, uh, my character as well is trying to digest this very crazy, very dark world through some level of comedy, you know. Yeah, I think it's very interesting as well that romance is not the focus because so many other teen franchises have done that. Um, Clary is after her mom who's been kidnapped and to me, being so close with my mom, I would imagine that I would do exactly what Clary did and I think it shows the strength in a young girl not to be focused on the men that come into the story. It's how she maneuvers around those issues and still focuses on the main task that's the most important. And I think that shows um, Clary's strength and also the strength of the story and Cassandra, the writer, that she's able to focus on more important things for Clary. For costume, I spoke to Gersha Phillips, our costume designer, um, and helped design the costume. Um, for the stunts and everything, that was all me. I pushed myself to do that. And uh, for like the piano stuff, that's me as well, yeah. I did all. I did it all. That was three days of what I can only describe as pure hell. Um, <laughs> we were stuck in a place called Hamilton. It, we were shooting from nine o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock in the evening to nine o'clock in the morning, tired. But it was really fun, but it was 
the most draining part of the shoot. But, it, you know, at the end of the day, that's the scene that looks so cool and it's such a cool moment. So I'm happy that we managed to get it. It's amazing. She is now maybe 18 years old. She was 16 during Mirror Mirror and her dad is the stunt coordinator. Um, her name's Naomi and she's a great, a great friend. She's a great young girl. She is a tough cookie um, and she's tiny, um, but she teaches me lots of moves and the confidence and to see her surrounded by these massive men and to hold her own gave me the confidence that I could probably do whatever she could do. Not everything, but enough. Um, and yeah, no, she, I always feel more confident knowing she's around. Amar is destroyed. Uh, yeah, there's a scene in the um, subway when Jace and Simon are arguing about um, the police and the demons, and I'm like about to faint. Um, there was an extra added part of that scene where we're sitting down and there was one line of dialogue, um, but that didn't make it in. There was one scene uh, where we were on a subway train and we're, we're, we're all sat there and we've just come from something, come from Luke's bookshop, I think. And my character says to Jace, I go, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but those girls over there are staring at you. And he goes, of course they are. I'm ridiculously handsome or something. He goes, I'm incredibly attractive. <laughs> I'm incredibilmente guapo. Um, yeah, no, but so, so that was... That was a moment where both myself and Clary go. Uh, so that that was that was a moment that I remember not seeing in the film. It's also like just little bits and pieces where the characters are going from one location to the next. I think to to keep the pace in the film, they they took out those a couple of those just small bridge scenes. Nothing of, of huge consequence. Sé lo que vi. Crees que lo sabes. ¿Por qué dibujo esto? Lo sabía, no eres un mundano. ¿Cómo dices? Um, I don't have the new script, so I don't know specifics, but from the books and everything, I think this is now her entrance into the Shadowhunter world, and she's not fully immersed yet, but she's definitely more open to the action sequences and to the strengths of a shadow hunter and, and more of the knowledge. So I'm excited to play more into the um, transformation aspects. I have an idea of what I would like already. They've gone through such a journey, both Jace and Clary, and their relationship changes so dramatically at the end of the first movie. Um, I think ultimately I have to keep the you know essence of who Jace is anyway, who he's been seen as in the first movie. Um, so I'm going to sort of just develop that a little bit more and, and sort of see where that goes. ¿Qué, qué es esa cosa? Si te lo dijera, no me creerías. Prueba. Era un demonio. Tienes razón. No te creo. Y esa cosa que me viste matar en la discoteca. También era un demonio. Y los demonios pueden tomar posesión de cualquiera. No debes fiarte de nadie, ni de los que crees conocer. ¿Y por qué de ti sí? ¿Te acabo de salvar la vida?